Hello, Every Nation Church family. Welcome to another week of our online service here in Singapore. My name is Jeremy, and we are so glad to have you join us today. You know, even as we draw near to God, I want to remind us that God says that He will draw near to us. When we take one step, God will take many steps towards us. That's how much He loves us. And there's no better way to draw near to God than come to Him in praise and worship and also in prayer. Now, the verse I've chosen to uh, encourage us today is taken from 3 John chapter 3, verse 2. Here is Apostle John, the Apostle of Love, saying, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Now, let me pause here for a moment. It is God's desire that we will prosper in all things, not just some things and some area of our life, but in all area of our life. To prosper means to do well. It's not just to survive, but to thrive in all area of our life. You know, as an earthly father, it is my heart desire that my children will prosper in all areas of their life. What are some areas that you can think of that need that prospering, that need, that need to do well? Well, I can just think of three broad areas that need prospering in my life. The first is relationship. Even Jesus grew in his relationship. Luke, 2, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 2 verse 52 say that Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. Relationship with God and relationship with man. What other thing? And it's mentioned here. And be in health. Our health needs prospering from the head to our toe. We want to have good health. No diseases, no harm. I don't believe that is from God. May God continue to hide us under the shelter of His wing. Not only our physical body, but our mental health needs to prosper as well. And finally, I think that our finance needs prospering. You know, the Bible says that the righteous shall never lack bread, shall never beg. And so, may God continue to prosper us financially that we can be a blessing. And how do we prosper in all things? John gave us the formula, just as your soul prosper. Under the foundation of these areas of our life, as our soul prosper, all areas of our life will prosper. In other words, our spiritual health, our inner man, our soul first need prospering. That is the foundation in all things. And then the question is asked, how then can our soul prosper? The answer is found in the next verse. It says in verse 3, For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of, listen to this, the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. Here, um, the people prosper because they recognize, number one, the truth is in them. You know, the truth is not just a teaching or a doctrine or it's not just some Bible study. The truth is a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the truth. They recognize Jesus, the truth. The Word made flesh is in them. And they continue to walk step by step in sync with Jesus as they walk in the truth. May we continue to recognize that God lives in us and may we, may we continue to walk just as Jesus walked. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for that revelation today that it is in your heart that you want to prosper all areas of our life. And God, I thank you that for that revelation, that for that to happen, our strong foundation needs to be our spiritual life as our soul prosper. And God, today we recognize Jesus, you live in us. And God, give us the grace to walk step by step in sing with you all, every minute, every day of our life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pass the time over to Pastor Joey for, for a good word from him. Pastor Joey. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's segment of Meditating on the Word of God. I'd like to ask you to excuse my voice, which is a little raspy today mainly from an allergy that I contracted a few days ago. We're studying in the last month the words for foundations, referencing the book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, where it says we have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. 
Down in verse 12, it says, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. The idea of this is that there is this level of infancy that's not growing up. In verse Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. The idea of moving forward to maturity. The idea here is to not move away from the elementary principles, but to move beyond them. Hence, I've entitled this message, Beyond Baby Food. My first point today is that what is maturity in Christ? Well, it's about moving forward. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. There it is, moving beyond the elementary teachings. The elementary teachings, as we've seen in the last month, are repentance, faith, baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. While important, we need to understand their elementary teachings and we need to move beyond them and to be taken forward to maturity. God's intent is to move us forward. Maturity is not about staying in the same place. It is not uncommon for people to believe that once I believe, I'm done. The fact of the matter is God wants us to mature. He wants us to be taken forward, which is what maturity in Christ is all about. It's about moving forward and it's about growing up. Hebrews chapter six, verse uh, ver, uh, chapter five rather, verse twelve says, "In fact, though at this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths about God's word all over again. You need milk and not solid food. You'll find this all over again, over and over in the Bible about maturity being a picture of a child growing up and becoming mature. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant." is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. In short, there is this teaching about righteousness that we need to understand to move us forward. But solid food is for the mature, there it is, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. The mature have learned to distinguish what is good and what is evil. For instance, an infant will try to put his finger in a plug not knowing good and evil. One of this is right and the other is wrong. Sadly, sometimes even mature people make the same mistake. God wants us to move beyond the elementary teachings and to move forward. God's growing process is not the one that is technocratic, but it's one that is rather biological, if not altogether organic. A child. A child grows biologically and organically. In short, maturity in God's economy is gradual. It is largely imperceptible. Something that you might not even notice is actually happening. It's inward going outward, and it's over time and seasons. Biological growth is what maturity in Christ looks like. It's about moving forward. It's about growing up. And it's about growing up in the right things. Now, sometimes there are people who don't see the need for maturity. Then there are those who don't want to mature, but are going about it in the wrong way. Some people feel that maturity is to grow up right now. It seems like I'm not moving. I'm still sinning and doing the same things, and I'm struggling with the same fear. Failing to realize that maturity in God is gradual, imperceptible, inward to outward, and over time and seasons. Then there are those who want to mature but are maturing in the wrong things. I've been through all these classes. Why am I, am I not still a small group leader? I've read my Bible several times over. How come my small group is not growing the same way that the other guys are? These are wrong ways to grow because maturity in Christ is not about that. It's about moving forward. It's about growing up. And more importantly, it's about growing up in the right things. My second point is equally as important. Maturity is becoming more like Jesus, more than just growing up and moving forward. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach the unity in the faith. Now, notice what it says, in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. The knowledge of the Son of God is what makes us mature, thus attaining to the whole measure 
of the fullness of Christ, meaning we become more like Christ. A similar verse is one we find in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 says, For those who foreknew, he foreknew, God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. There is the image of his son that we might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. There's this idea of being conformed to the image of his son, which is the mark of maturity. And so, it's the same idea of conforming to the image of Jesus. This is God's intent and God's commitment. Now we read in verse 28 how he does it. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, whom he has called according to his purpose. God, we know that God works for the good of all things. In other words, God works all things to cause us to become mature. As a child, every victory and every fall, God uses to mature a child in the same way that God uses our victories and our failures to make us successful and to grow up and become mature. Every success is a measure that God uses to grow us and make us mature and every failure likewise. Every high and every low, every intentional or every unintentional event in our life, God uses to make us more mature. He uses it over time and seasons. Maturity is becoming more like Jesus. God will use anything and everything to make that come to pass. Now notice where it says, everything God uses for good. Back in Romans 8, 28, it says, For we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. There we find the words, for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Let's face it, we all want a certain measure of success. Immaturity says that God wants me to be more like Jesus, hence I cannot be successful. Maturity says God wants me to be more like Jesus, whether or not I'm successful or not successful. God, we all know we, we all want a certain lifestyle. Immaturity says God wants me to be more like Jesus, hence I won't enjoy a certain kind of lifestyle. Maturity is saying God wants me to be more like Jesus whether or not I have a certain kind of lifestyle. Let's face it, we all want to be liked by others. Immaturity says because God wants me to be more like Jesus, I won't be liked by others. Maturity says God wants me to be more like Jesus whether or not I'm liked by others or I'm not liked by others. And finally, let's face it, we all want to be free of fear and pain. Immaturity says, because God wants me to be more like Jesus, I won't be free of fear and pain. Maturity declares, God wants me to be more like Jesus, whether or not I'm free of fear or completely fear, free of pain. Maturity is becoming more like Jesus. God's will uses everything, and everything God uses is for our good, so that we can become more like Jesus. Back to Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, those he has called according to his purpose. The purposes of God is to mature us, to cause us to become more and more like Jesus, regardless of what we're looking at. Hence, we arrive at verse 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Those that God foreknew, he predestined, and the whole goal of all of this, God's will and will to use everything, God's will to make every, cause everything for our good is to make us conform to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. In summary of my second point, maturity is becoming more like Jesus. God's will, God will use everything. Everything God uses is for good so that we can become more like Jesus. My final point in this short message is how God matures us. How does God matures us? First of all, he gives us the ability to become mature. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 and 46, we find an interesting verse. It is said, so it is written, the first Adam became a, life, a living being, the last Adam being Jesus, a life-giving spirit. In short, God has caused us to have this fundamental difference between these two Adams. Jesus is a life-giving spirit. The first man was from the dust of the earth. The second man is from heaven. And thus we have this new ability 
to do things above and beyond what our earthly nature can do. And as was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as the heavenly man, so are also those who are of heaven. And that's us. And just as we have been born of the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. What that simply means is God has given us a new DNA, a new strand, and a new ability we did not have before. Something that God deposited in us, a supernatural power to allow us to hear the Holy Spirit and discern life from death. So how does God mature us? He gives us the ability to mature. Secondly, He removes our inability to mature. Now, in John chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts every branch in us that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. God's desire is for us to become mature as a tree, and thus He has this thing called pruning. With the tree, trees need to be pruned in order to mature. When a free tree is growing too fast in one area, it can cause its shape and structure to be compromised. One storm and the tree can collapse. And thus, the gardener needs to ensure the right shape and structure in the same way that God has to prune things in our lives that could be something that could endanger us moving forward. The reason why a gardener prunes is to reduce the risk of pests and diseases. There are certain things in our life that God has to prune to remove the risk of certain pests or certain demonic activity and diseases that could harm us moving into the future and destroy us and may cause us to be incapable of becoming mature. And finally, to promote flowering and fruitfulness. God wants to prune us so that we can become more fruitful and more productive to enhance the quality of our life. Imagine the life of a right-shaped tree and a ripe-shaped life that causes us to become mature. Word of caution and warning, even the most mature of us need pruning. It's easy to think that, that, that we don't need it, but the truth of the matter is all of us need pruning and it takes timing and experience and skill to do it at the right time in the right place. Hence, we need to trust the right gardener. It's not easy to prune. The right timing, the right experience, the right skill set, and the right places is only done by a skillful gardener, hence a God who can find that out best for us. It's not just easy to prune, it is also not easy to, for the tree to be pruned. Which, which leads to the question, why don't you just let us be God? Why do you keep uh, pruning us? Why do you keep uh, shaping, reshaping us? Why do you have to keep removing all this diseases? The simple answer is because God loves us enough. So how does God mature us? He gives us the ability to mature. He removes our inability to mature. And he sets us as examples to follow. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 5, it says, But if anyone obeys his word, love love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. We've been set the right example of maturity, no less than Jesus himself. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 also tells us, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Not just Jesus and Paul, but other disciples of Jesus. I found that I want to hang out with different people, I have different expressions of maturity, of things that convict me, that move me forward, that show me what maturity looks like. How does God mature us? He gives us the right ability to mature. He gives us, removes our inability to mature and it sets us examples to follow to become mature. Now, here's a reminder to remind us, what should I do in order to move forward? Well, as we've said time and time again, the first thing you need to do is to be reminded to pray. Prayer is the first place that sets you in a place where you can move forward in God. Meditate on His Word. Proclaim the fact that Jesus has saved you despite your failures and your sins and has given you the faith to move forward and fellowship with those who have become mature or are on their journey to maturity for you to become mature yourself. In the next three more weeks, we're going to look at this idea of maturity. But for now, remember, what is maturity in Christ? It is the foundation. It is moving about moving forward. It is not just about moving forward, 
It's about growing up and it's about growing up in the right things. Secondly, maturity is becoming more like Jesus. God will use anything and everything to make us mature. God is using this and everything for our good. And God will, will cause us to become more like, like Jesus. And finally, how does God mature us? He gives us the ability to, to mature. He removes our inability to mature so that we can become more like Jesus through the example of others. Join me in this short proclamation of Jesus as we pick up bread and cup and pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, bless this time of preaching with your holy word. Bless your people as we endeavor to mature and move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Joey, for the encouraging word. Now we're going to uh, turn our time right now to offering. And even as we take off the offering, let us come from a place of worship. I want to reread the verse uh, at the start that says in uh, 3 John uh, chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you'll prosper in all things. And that also includes our financial, all areas of our life, including our financial. Now, God wants to prosper us financially. But why? Why do He want to prosper us financially? So that we can boast about it? No, our cup is filled so that we can pour it out again and so that God can pour in again and so that we can pour it out again. The Bible says that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And even as we give today, let us come with that recognition that God is the provider of all things. And as He pour into us, let us remember to pour back into His kingdom. Well, here's how you can give. You can give online by going to the website enc.sg slash give or simply scan the QR code over there. Now, over the course of this week, I also want to encourage you to continue to worship God in praise and worship. And here are some uh, playlists that we have prepared for you. Via, you can get it via the QR code shown on the screen there. And let's engage. Let us come and draw closer to God. Let us lean forward to Him throughout the week and be encouraged. Well, that's all the time that we have for you for this week's service. Have a great week and God bless you and your family. God bless. Lift you high, you 